Hi there, my name is Stanton Jack and I'm a pro tire for Togan's Fly Shop and today we're going to be tying uh, one of my patterns, river patterns called the Crypto Caddis Larva. This is um, half natural, half attractor. It's, um, it's used in uh, rivers, high mountain range rivers, higher elevation freestone rivers. Um, great in the spring, um, fishes right really well right through um, through summer. It's um, based off a of Rycophilia um, larva. So let's get started. So things we have or materials we're using today, um, we have uh, Togan's, a Togan's size 12 60 degree jig hook. We have um, Togan's slotted uh, tungsten bead in matte black. Uh, this one's in a 3.2 millimeter. Gets down really quick in the rocks, the riverbed. I'm going to be using some ice stub uh, peacock black for the legs and the thorax. And for part of the counter ribbing will be Togan's Ultra Stretch in, um, in olive, in light olive. And we also, for the underbody, we'll be using Togan's Crony Skin. A holographic crony skin in chartreuse. So let's begin. And for threads, we have UTC 70 in light olive and UTC 70 in black. So let me get started, put some thread on the hook here. So I've got my slotted bead on my size 12. And uh, let's begin the process. So just going to get a, a thread body down here, just so your ultra stretch doesn't move on you too much. And then you're going to pull out, pull out a strand of Togan's ultra stretch in light olive. Just, this one's a bit long, I'm just going to cut this down a bit. And go ahead and start it right up at the top there. This stuff you want to just do a couple light wraps to set it before you start stretching it. Don't stretch it one, two wraps or something. It will it'll move on you. So here I just got it stretched and you're going to try and get that on the side. Now I've kind of, actually I came into it a bit funny there. Kind of rolled on me onto the top. So I'm just going to reset that. Stuff's a bit noodly, so you kind of like that. Give a little counter wrap there so it thread lands flat. And you can always kind of just push it around with your fingernail if you got nails like me. Great for fly tying, great for guitar playing. Well, fingers still a guitar playing, I guess. So, anyways, I got a couple wraps down and I'm just Stretching that out, rolling it back as we go here, keeping it stretched. Now you don't need to go around the bend, you just want a little bit like that. You're going to come through and flatten it all out a little bit. Go back right to the curve, right where you stopped last time, right there. Now you're going to come in. I pull a strand of this stuff out? Yes, I did. So then you're going to come in, dig into your... This stuff's great. It's great for chronomids. It's great for uh, any type of flash you want to put on there. You know, you can put it on the, the back of a leech or something like that. It works great. Um, usually I take one strand. It's kind of got curled on the bottom, but I'll cut it in half. And don't lose that piece. And then I'll go around here, take it like this, and grab it. So it's right. So I've got a half a piece of Karani um, skin here. I cut it in half. 
I then folded it over my uh, my thread in half like that so you can see how oh, that's in a half and I'll go and I'll bring it right to the back and I'll go one two three four five and you're just kind of setting that in place so now I've got crony skin I've got my um, what is it ultra stretch on the back for counter rib I've got one strand folded in half for my underbody you can see how that really pops I've got my bead on the top and then brought my thread up to the front now you don't have to do this it's optional but I like to put oh and I forgot to include it in the materials list but I like to do this it makes uh, I find this stuff is really much like a, a fish magnet uh, material and what it is it's mirage tinsel and opal medium and I'm going to use this for a wing case now these things bounce around on the river bottom um, so you can put your wind keys on the top. Some people say, well, no, then it's when it's when you're hanging it off your your uh, leader and tippet and stuff, it hangs upside down. It's bouncing on those rocks. You want this thing on the bottom. These worms crawl around on the bottom. Um, you know, they, they get up to an inch and a half long, right? So they're crawling all around. They're getting bounced in the current, uh, looking for food. So um, you can put it on the top here, or you can invert it like I'm going to do just to make life interesting and, and more difficult. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take a piece of it and I'm gonna tie it in uh, inverted like this. So what I do is I put it on there, I do one, I do two. You think, well, that's not gonna work. Well, then maybe I'll go three and I'll grab each side and pull it up. So I'm parallel with my hook eye. Now that three might be a bit much. That three wraps that is. And then I'm just going to pull it down, pulling it down straight up. Might have to loosen off your hook a bit or your thread a bit. Get it down, get it down, get it down. And now that's good. And now I'm nice and straight. So when I pull that forward, it's going to go nice and straight with the hook eye. Then I'm just going to keep that straight and I'm going to go back. Now you don't have to go too far back, but it makes for a nice uh, um, wing case over like that. So I leave it like this. That's a bit long. I'm going to hack a little bit of that off. Okay, so now there's my wing case. So then what I'm going to do is you can kind of just, you're going to have to work around that as you wrap. So then I'm going to go like this and do a little whip finish or two whip, two turn whip finish. I'm going to use my rotary function here. That really curled up on me. That could be a bit of a nuisance, but I'll work around it. I grab my crony skin like this and I'm going to go and I'm going to create my body. You can kind of see how this is starting to pop. I can't see it, but you can see it on the video. I got the lights dimmed here. Just so uh, it hopefully shows up better for you guys. The picture quality. Yeah, I knew that was going to be a nuisance, but that's okay. I'll work around it. Just going to grab that pinch. There we go. Now I'm through it. Keep going. I'm right up at the top. Go once over to hold it, two, set it in place, one in front, give it a trim. Now the thing is you're going to have the legs and everything on the front there, one more. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another, you know, you can do a half hitch on these or I just do these little two turn whip finishes. And uh, I don't know if you can see that, how that's popping, but that's your underbody. So now you got your wing case, you got your underbody, and then you're going to create this counter rib, which is works out really cool. Now this stuff here that you want to make sure your first one stretches and it doesn't have to go over the material. So it has that little bit of that worm kind of taper to it. And the, another thing is you want to make sure it's straight. 
sometimes you start winding this and you wind it on crooked right from the get-go I think like I just did there and give that a good stretch and then you're going to start coming around and you want this so your rib so you're technically using this material as a rib but it looks like the the holographic is a rib and this is your your body but it's actually what they call a counter rib yeah there's that nuisance uh, wing case like i did say it is optional but it does make for a very attractive uh look to it and as you get once you get past there don't worry about these your even segmented ribs and stuff because once you get up to once you get past that you're going to have that covered in um in that peacock ice stub now here make sure you give yourself a good couple wraps before you release that because that likes to just Oh, you're such a nuisance that thing here. Hold on a second. Maybe I should have left it longer. Either way, I'm gonna get it. Now give yourself a good couple wraps before you cut that. All right, that's good enough. One more for good measure. There we go. And one more in front. So that's on there now. You don't have to worry about that. And give that a stretch, not too much. Don't rip it right out. It'll go through the thread. Give it a stretch, give it a cut. It's done. Now let's see if I can bend this thing back so it's out of the way for my dubbing. Good enough, perfect. Let's give that a couple wraps. Then what I like to do too, a little whip finish there. Now I know that body's not coming on, that counter rib is not coming uh, undone. So then I've done that and I'm going to cut that thread. I've done a couple whip turn whip finish. I'm going to cut that off and I'm going to come in with my black thread. Black UTC. Oh, why did I do that? Right during the video, my nail, a piece of my finger caught that. Real fly tying here for you folks. What really happens at the bench. I guess I can't see what I'm doing here. Just trying to thread that through. Got it. So I come in here. Four, start that thread. Good. All these little frayed threads there. Sorry, I'm doing the fine touches here. And one, two, then I'm going to make a dubbing loop. So I'm going out quite far here, flipping it over, coming around it. Now you don't need to make as big as loop as I just did there. That, that was quite a large loop. All right, so what I'm doing, oh, I just realized I forgot my dubbing spinner. Um, can I do this without it? Let's see what happens. So, taking a pinch of this. A little bit more than that. So this is going to get really creative, folks. So I'm going in there, putting my, my dubbing in. Now, what can I use to spin this? Is that going to work for me? You know what? Well, I got a pinch there. I will just go like this. So, unorthodox, yes. Will it work? I'll try. Normally, I have a dubbing spinner and I spin it here. I don't today, because I left it upstairs. So that's okay. So what I've done here <laughs> is I've just wet my fingers down and uh, I'm just spinning it, holding it, grabbing it, spinning it again. I think it will work. Um, 
is holding that. Bring that up to the front there a little bit. Just gonna wrap that around. Bit of a mess here, I know, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just forgot my my dubbing in there. Tie that all in. All right. So then what you're going to do, hold on a second here, let me get this out of the way here. You're going to pull all these fibers down because that's going to be your legs. Wet your fingers if you have to, pull them all down. You can see that. So those are quite long now, but we're going to trim those down. And what you're going to do, pull them all forward, pull them all down, wet your fingers if you need to. You're going to have that. And then what we do is these legs aren't too long on these things. They're short. You just come in there and you just trim these things down. You can kind of see that like that, right? Come in there and give it a little trim. Will it look better with the dubbing loop? Yes, with the dubbing spinner. But, you know, we got to make, make do with these things. Trim on the top if you have a couple. So you can kind of see that. There's your legs underneath it, right? Um, let's just straighten that out. And that's going to sit like that. You got your body. Now I'm using it on a, on a size 12 jig hook here, but you could go um, as long as you wanted to. You could go these in a in an eight if you really wanted to. And, and long, because some of these worms can be up to an inch and a half long. They can be really long. So I'm just trimming these legs down a little bit, giving it a bit of a haircut. How's it look on your side? Oh yeah, a couple, couple Fraser. Remember, they just have legs in the front, right? They have their little legs on the front and their wormy bodies in the back. All right, things to do when you don't have all your, your tools with you, you make it work. Okay, so there we go. Lastly is that fun wing case now what you're going to do make sure your threads right up by your bead and you're going to come in and pull that down like that do one do two doesn't have to be much because you're going to do a big whip finish and there and that's set in place and that just gives you that attractive when that thing's bouncing around all of a sudden the fish see that believe me opal is magic it's one of those you know secrets of the universe when it comes to fishing there's duct tape Another secret of the universe, and then there's Opal Flash, Opal Mirage fin Tinsel Flash. Okay, so now we've got that set. We've got our wing case, we've got our body, we've got our legs. Come in here. One, two, three, four, five. And give it a whip finish. Maybe two more, three more. Build it up, two, three, and there you go. Now, as an option, you can do this if you want to. You, you know, you comb these out when they're properly dubbed in and stuff like that. But um, you can uh, coat, put a little coating of UV here to, to really hold that um, rib and underbody together. You can use some Sally Hansen head cement of your choice. Um, you can put a little bit of uh, UV over the wing case, right? And that will sit there and uh, you'll hang that down you can go um, super heavy with these i've tied these in four millimeters uh beads tungsten beads to really get it down and bounce it off the bottom um another thing too which is really really good for you still water uh, guys out there you tie them on uh on regular hooks and instead of a big tungsten bead build up uh um, eight or you know, eight to 10 wraps of uh, 0 0.01 um, lead wire for a head and then wrap your black thread over it and you create this beautiful looking uh, um, caddis pupa with a similar design in the in the counter ribbing. Um, but that's it, folks. That is your crypto caddis larva. 
great pattern. Uh, tie some up and um, and get out to the river and enjoy it. It's going to work for you. Thank you very much.